This break is brought to you by Audible. For a free 30-day trial and a free audiobook, head over to audible.com forward slash gamebreaker. Hello guys, my name is Olivia Grace and I'm back again to talk to you today about Blizzard's lead systems designer Greg Ghostcrawler Street posting a really interesting response to a thread on the American forums. Now, a blood elf priest called Aia had her eight-year-old son asking her how she would get into game design. He was desperate and still is no doubt to work as a game designer for Blizzard and he specifically liked Blizzard perhaps because his mom plays quite a lot of World of Warcraft and so his mom rather than letting him bother the customer support team with his requests decided to post a thread on the US forums. Now she got several good replies, but she really hit the jackpot when Blizzard community manager Daxari weighed in saying that Ghostcrawler, the lead system designer for Blizzard Entertainment's World of Warcraft, had spotted the post and written a really seriously lengthy response. Now you can see that whole response in the article below, but let's just run through it quickly and summarize some of the key points for the TLDR version. So Ghostcrawler starts off by discussing education. He talks about the fact that although there are game design degrees out there, they're not really a necessity as such to getting a position designing games. He, for example, as we know, or maybe you don't know, um, has a marine biology background of all things. So even in his case, it's certainly not necessary to have that game design degree, but nonetheless, it's clearly a good thing to shoot for. There's no, there's not going to be any harm in doing that, is what it seems to be. He says that there isn't a wrong college degree to pursue for game design. Um, he said that he does say though that the only common thread between all the diverse backgrounds that game designers at Blizzard come from is that they have good communication skills. He says this several times through his essay, which I'll call it, um, saying that a big part of the job is explaining your designs to people around you and collaborating in a team. So the next thing, of course, is, is experience. This is always one of the trickiest things to get when you're finding a job. And he says you do need some kind of experience to get a job in game design. So if you need experience to get a job in game design, to get a job in game design, where do you get that experience from? He has a few suggestions. So one of his suggestions is to get a job in a game company and move sideways into games design. So people who start off in quality assurance or customer service, just get your foot in the door and then you can move sideways through the company and hopefully end up in game design. He also talks about the other options available to you if you're unable to get that first job in the gaming industry. Firstly, design a game. You can do it in your own time. It seems like a sort of semi straightforward idea, like the logic is straightforward, but designing a game is, is not a straightforward task whatsoever. And um, now he does say that the next part is important. You have to finish it. So they like to say completed games to prove that you can follow through on things, that you can complete projects. He also suggests building an add on, a level or additional content for an existing game. And note, so this is how exact actually how he himself got his foot in the door going from marine biology to game design, that well-known career path, by designing a scenario for Age of Empires, which was eventually included in a shipping project. So that's how he got started, that's how you could get started. Um, he also says, goes on to say that if you want to be a game designer, you need to network, you, you need to sort of be known to people, you need to get yourself out there. He says they are much more likely to go for a candidate that they know already, especially if they know something of their design skills. So that's a really important thing to remember. He finally goes on to talk about what Blizzard specifically looks for in game designers. Um, of course, noting that other companies may place different values on these traits, but what are Blizzard after? They're after creativity. Uh, creative problem solving, he says, is often more important than creativity and naming creatures or coming up with good stories. It, game design seems like a problem solving task. That, that, does, that does kind of make sense. And um, he talks about communication again. We mentioned that already, but it's a big deal for Blizzard, it seems, as he makes such a big point of it in his post. And passion, which is probably the easiest one. I think all of those of us who do work in the gaming industry are pretty passionate about our games. Um, but also you have to display it. I mean, it's one of those things, like if you turn a a hobby into a career, you can sometimes lose that passionate drive for it that you had when you started and you were just playing games for fun. So you need to be you need to be really passionate about it. You need to remain passionate through all the ups and downs, through the long hours, for through the testing a game until you're sick to the teeth of it, through cutting your favorite feature, through everything. Um, so yeah, he says it's a great job if you can get it. And I sounds from his face like it's a de definitely a really hard task, but wishing you all the best of luck. So that's what Ghostcrawler has to say on game design. I found it a really interesting and useful post. I don't have the skills to go into game design myself, but I'd, I'd love to, 
see anyone who is interested in it read this from Ghost Crawler. It's fantastic information. And if you're also looking to break into the gaming industry, don't forget to check out Monty's Minute, which is one of Game Breaker's shows linked in the articles below. It's Monty who's a gaming professional who talks about the many different ways to break into the gaming industry in all the different aspects of that work. So as ever, guys, keep it locked and dialed to Game Breaker TV for all your gaming needs. And I'm looking forward to seeing your comments in the article below.